What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to take complex objects like chains or ropes and bend them along paths inside a blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna start with a curve, right? Because curves contain more path data or information than meshes. All right, so I'm just gonna do a shift A. I'm just gonna draw a Bezier curve and then I am going to tab into edit mode, delete the vertices by tapping the X key. And then I'm just going to use the draw function in order to draw a curve. And I'm gonna draw a simple curve like this. So it's a very simple curve and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this very end point right here because it's gonna mess everything up. So we're just gonna select this, click X to get rid of it and we're good to go. So now we have a curve object right here. Now let's say that we had something that we wanted to bend along this curve object. So um, the simplest way to do this would be I'm going to just add, we'll, we'll call it like a torus or something like that. So we'll just set our 3D cursor to right here. I'm just going to do a shift A and I'm going to add a torus right here. I'm going to scale it down like this and move it over. And so what I want to do is I want to make sure that I've applied my rotation and scale, but I want this to follow along this object. And so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to add a modifier to this torus right here. So I'm going to jump into modifiers. I'm going to add an array modifier, right? Because what I want this to do is I want this to create copies of this object right here. And so the way that I want to do that is I want to set our array fit type to fit curve instead of fix count, right? Because fix count, I can set the number of objects that are in here, but it's not going to automatically adjust to fit along this object. However, if I was to switch this to fit curve right here, then what I can do is I can pick my curve out of the list. And what this is gonna do is this is going to take my object and it's going to create enough copies so that it matches the length of this curve. And so what I can do is I can select this. Usually I like to kind of try to align this with my curve object when I first start off like this. So this is basically created enough copies that this is gonna go all the way along this curve. However, what it's not doing is following along yet. So what we wanna do is we wanna add an additional modifier called the curve modifier. And so for the curve modifier, we wanna do the same thing. We wanna tell this, okay, we want you to deform this object along this object right here. So notice how that worked. This is basically taking this and it's deforming it along this curve. But it's getting kind of messed up because it's not aligned with the curve, right? So usually what I like to do is once I kind of get this set up, I wanna take it and I wanna move it so that it's actually following along the curve right here. So notice how if I place this in the same 3D space as my curve right here, then all of a sudden it's going to follow along that curve nicely. And so there's a few things we can do with this. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm just going to tab into edit mode real quick. And what I wanna do is I wanna rotate my object, right? Because I don't want this to be flat anymore. What I want is I wanna rotate it 90 degrees like this. Then if I tab back out, notice what I'm getting is these are now standing up. So the orientation of our object is going to affect the way that this follows along our curve. Another thing we can do is we can also adjust our relative offset. So notice how when I adjust my relative offset, like this, these are now going to overlap right here. So I do have another problem though, which is this doesn't really do what we want it to do, right? Like if we wanted our torus to act as a chain in here, for example, right now it's not doing that because these aren't rotating. But what we could do is we could tab into edit mode like this, and we could actually add by doing a shift D, an additional copy of this ring right here. And actually before I do that, I'm going to do a control Z. I want to take this and I want to scale it down along the Z axis a little bit like this. This is an ideal. We'll look at a better, um, we'll look at a better piece of geometry for this in a second. But for right now, I'm just going to take this and let's go ahead and go into front view, go to wireframe view. And I'm just going to take this whole thing and I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. Again, not an ideal chain link, but it's close. And so I'm going to go back to material preview mode. Now notice how I can adjust the offsets in here using this relative offset function right here. We're going to use that in a second. 
but the first thing we want to do is we want to select all of this, do a Shift D to duplicate it, and I'm actually going to move this over along the Y or X axis right here. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to rotate it like this. So notice how when I rotate it like this, now my piece of geometry that I have in here before the array modifier is actually made up of two links instead of one. Well, now if I tab out of edit mode, notice how this is going to follow along with that curve right here. And we may need to apply our rotation and scale on this one. I'm not really sure. Actually, we did that in edit mode, so I think we're good to go. But what I want to do is I want to adjust my relative offset like this. Well, notice how when I adjust my relative offset, what that's going to do is that's going to adjust how this object is offset along this curve. And if I turn off just for a second, my array modifier and my curve modifier, just so you can see what this is doing. This is basically taking this piece of geometry right here and repeating it using these functions. So I'm going to turn these back on. There we go. And so the cool thing about this is now if I was to go in and select my curve, right? So if I was to take this curve right here and tab into edit mode for a second and actually adjust it. So if I move this, Notice how this chain is going to move along with it. So what I can do then is I can use this in order to quickly generate things like chains that actually follow along paths. And so there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. One thing that I think is particularly interesting is you can also use like more preset assets. So for example, um, I'm going to jump into top down view real quick. I'm going to add a, another curve. And we'll do the same thing. We're just going to get rid of this and add a drawn in curve like this one. And we'll go ahead and let's just create a curve that kind of goes in a circle like this. So that ought to be good enough. I think we're good to go. Maybe we'll do a little bit of rotation on this last object just to make sure that the curve is smooth. But I feel like we're in pretty good shape with this curve. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use I'm actually going to use some pre-made assets. And so there's actually a and so there's actually a really cool add-on in Blender called Simply Wrap Pro that you can find in the Blender market. I will link to it in the notes down below. It's a tool more designed to help you generate curves um, or wraps around character objects. So what it does is it basically allows you to select an object, draw a path around it, and then generate things like um, things like cloth and other things like that. Um, one of the cool things about this is not only does it come with that tool, but this version right here contains their wrap asset pack. Or um, down below, there's also a pack of just the wrap assets without the actual tool here. So there's a few different options in here. But what I like about this is this actually has some pre-built, um, it has like a pre-built library in here of things that are designed to follow along a curve. Right? So we can actually drag these in and then use the curve modifier um, if we want to draw our own path or you could actually use it with the add-on itself. So I'll link to that in the notes down below, but that's where I got this. And so what I want to do in this situation is I actually want to um, go to my asset browser and I'm loving the Blender asset browser right now. What it does is it allows me to just reference that folder and notice how I can find all of these objects in here really quickly. Well, what I want to do is I want to take one of them and I just want to drag it in. So let's say for example that we wanted, um, let's go with the rope right here. So if I drag the rope in right here and I'm going to go ahead and align it just for simplicity's sake with my curve. But what I can do is I can do the same thing with this object. So I can add an array modifier to it and I can fit it to the second Bezier curve. So fit curve, we're going to find Bezier curve 001. So notice how that sets the length and it's just repeating this rope object right here. Well, then I can add a curve modifier right here. I can pick the Bezier curve again and use this in order to follow along with the curve. And so you're going to want to align this with your actual curve, but notice how once you do that, right, and you get this in here the right way, you've got this really great rope that follows along a curve. And basically what it's doing is it's repeating this object over and over again. And so there's just some really interesting applications to something like this. So if we wanted to do something similar again, right? So we're just gonna move our 3D cursor over here. So there's also 
like a chain of light bulbs in here. And so usually I like to go ahead and get that object origin a little closer to the object. So I'm going to um, use origin transform in order to do that real quick. But then we could just do the same thing. So array modifier, fit our length, curve modifier, fit our object, and then align with our object. But that's got some interesting implica applications because but you could also scale this object up and then do an apply rotation and scale like this. So you can use the scale function in order to make objects follow along paths and curves as well. All right, so leave a comment below if you have any questions. I will also link to Simply Wrap Pro, um, which you can check out for wrapping objects in cloth, but also for that asset library. So I will link to those on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.